Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Ari Views back with another video and iOS 17.4 has recently been released. It's a great update with a lot of new features and changes, of course, making iOS 17 even better. Not just feature and changes, it is also great on performance and the battery life is quite decent. So in today's video, we're taking another look at this update and I will show you guys 10 new tips and tricks that I believe every iPhone user running their iPhone on iOS 17.4 must know and use on their device. Now, first of all, we're starting with music recognition. Now, Apple has added some really new features, really cool features to this iOS feature. So you will have your music recognition, of course, on the control center. So when you go here, you will have all the songs that you have identified using music recognition, basically Shazam, but now it's music recognition. So if I have the history of songs here, I can tap on one of them. And what this allows me to do now is that I can tap on the three dots right there. And this allows me to directly add this song to any of my playlists that I have on the Apple Music app. I can also add this to my library or I can just tap here and directly open it to basically add it to any of the playlists that I want. Now, another pretty cool thing that Apple has done with this is that if you go to one of the songs that you have recognized here with music recognition, and if you open this on Shazam, so if I go ahead and open any of the songs on Shazam, now from here, it will give me an option to actually play this on other places. So if I have a song here that I have recognized, this basically gives me the option here to more ways to listen to this song. I can tap right there. In this case, I have Spotify that I use on my device. If I don't wanna play it on the Apple Music app, I can go ahead and open it directly to Spotify from here. Now, Apple has done some amazing changes with the podcast app as well. We have now the transcription here. You tap here, you enable the transcription. Now, this will, of course, play as you play the podcast. It will move and, of course, it will highlight the words here. But what you can do is also tap the three dots right there and you can view the complete transcription like this. So, you can see right there we have the complete transcription of that podcast. Now, with transcriptions, what's really cool is that, of course, you can search within transcriptions. So what I can do here is actually just swipe up here to remove the player controls. And then we have here a search bar from here. I can go ahead and search any word I want on this podcast transcription. Now, something else I can do here is if I tap on the three dots and if I view the full transcription, just like I showed you guys before, I still have an option here to actually search anything I want within that transcription. So there's a search bar right there and you can do the same here. Just search for any word, anything you need to find within this transcription. Now, as you know, Apple has added the ability for Siri to read messages in other languages other than English. Now, when you go to your settings, you go under Siri and search right here, we'll have messaging with Siri. Now, the way to do that is pretty simple. You go ahead and add languages here. Then when you receive a message on that language, Siri will be able to read that message for you. But you can not just add one other language, you can add multiple of those. So here I have Korean added. I can go ahead and add any other language I want here. So if I just want to add here another language, Japanese, I can go ahead and add it as easy as that. So just like that, you can have multiple languages in which Siri can read messages to you. And not just add multiple languages, you can also choose different voices for each of these languages. So you can see right here, when you have added any of the languages that you want, you will have that little arrow right there. If I tap here, you can see it has two different voices. And once you tap on one of that, it will actually show you a preview of how that voice sound. And of course, it will also download that voice to your device. So Siri can read that message on that language in that certain voice that you choose. So you can see right there for Korean, there have been two voices. We have four here for Japanese. Now, a lot of different languages will have some more, some will have less voices, but you can pick any one of them. It will be downloaded to your device. And from now on, Siri will be able to read messages on that language. Now, if you're done with the language, you don't want to have it here anymore. Just know, notice that these will be stored on your iPhone and they will take up space. You can delete them as easy as this. 
One of the best new features that Apple has added to the App Store recently is your purchase history. Now this used to be on the Apple ID on the settings app and it was kind of hard to find. Probably most of you guys didn't know that even exists. But now once you go to your account on the App Store, you will be able to see your full purchase history. So here's some tips that I can show you guys regarding this new feature. So once you're here, you will basically th see everything that you have purchased with your Apple ID. But what you can do is also search for any name of an, any app or any book or anything, maybe a subscription or something like that directly from here. We can also tap here and then it will show you the date range. So it will show your purchases from the last 30 days up to the last year, or maybe you can choose a custom range. You tap here and you can just choose a custom range. You can see the year when the first app was purchased with your Apple ID up to today you can just choose any of these years right here so basically you go here you pick any year you want any month and it will show you all the purchases you have made now here will have a cost whether it's showing paid or free or you can do both of them and then you will also have all types of different purchases and you can basically tap here click on apply and it will show you only the subscriptions that you have paid in this case if i select subscriptions now this right here will be for iphone 15 series users only unfortunately apple has decided not to place this feature on older devices hopefully they will in the near future so when you go to your settings you go under battery you will find something here called battery health and it says normal which means that your device has the battery in normal state and then right here will find all the different details you need to know regarding your device you will have the capacity you will have the cycle count here now with the iphone 15 series apple has changed the 500 cycle count which they used to say before it should last 500 cycles before the battery will drop to 80 percent now it's 1000 if we tap right here on the belt you can see it says it should retain 80 percent of the capacity at 1000 cycles that's pretty cool you will have all the other details regarding the battery of your iphone now with ios 17.4 apple has added also a new widget it is called the city digital clock widget and you can find it of course under the widgets tab you add it to your home screen you will have copertino here as the default one but what you can do is of course just tap and hold here tap on edit clock and then from here you can just go ahead and pick any city you want and you can then display it right here on the home screen of your device it will show you the name of the city the digital clock of course and the time zone difference right there and these right here around these lines indicate the seconds and last but not least we're moving under privacy so head on to your settings go under privacy and security and right here we'll find a new section called passkey access for web browsers so web browsers will basically ask you to have access to pass key if you have allowed that then those apps will be shown right here on the list so if you have done that make sure you go ahead and check this list there may be apps that you don't want, you want to stop the access to your pass keys you can just go ahead and disable them from here but as long as you have not allowed passkey access to any of the apps this list will be empty so that is it for this video guys these are 10 tips and tricks that i believe every iphone user must know running their device on ios 17.4 hope you guys enjoyed the video leave a like if you did and of course subscribe for more videos and i will see you on the next one